my God. That was a shock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can you just like give me a warning on that one? <laughs> you all right? I, yeah, I'm doing great, mate. How are you? Thanks for coming on. Um, yeah, I'm just uh, getting over my, my, uh, my COVID uh, situation here. But um, yeah, it's not fun. Like I have to tell you, I'm not. I'm not even going. I'm not even going to Dubai now. Oh no! Uh, no, because of the um, post. I had to. I had to retest, and it's still in my system. So yeah, it takes. Uh, well, you remember in uh, I think it was uh, the Travelers Championship. They had a group go out that all three of them had had COVID. That's so, right. You know, yeah. It was like ten days or two weeks later, and they were. Still testing positive with no, you know, symptoms. It stays in the system and, for a while. Yeah, and you're not, and they say after with a certain sort of CT level that you're, um, you're kind of non-contagious. So, you know, that's kind of where I am right now. It's like it's non-contagious, but if I travel to Dubai, Dubai and I test positive over there, then yeah. it starts again. I'm, it starts again. Yeah, I'm quarantined yeah. over there. So. Um, yeah, it is, I mean, it is what it is. So I'm, I'm just getting over it now. I'm still not myself. I'm still not 100% energy-wise. Oh, I, I got you at your best then. <laughs> yeah, you did, yeah. You got me at my ultimate best. So uh, people don't realize I can be really rude to you because I know you for uh, more than 20 years. <laughs> and it's starting, true. We're starting, we're starting true. early. And you're, you're <laughs> off form, so I'm, I'm up one already. <laughs> Where are you so, uh, right now? I'm in uh, Arizona, and it's actually okay. uh, a bit chilly. So unfortunately, you have the you have the Instagram live, the worst background. So, right. <laughs> um, so uh, so yeah, I, I knew I met you. What year did you start with us in uh, in Austria? J uh, Stuart and I met uh, working for David Ledbetter in Austria, and uh, and he was great then. And been I, I have getting, no idea getting better ever since. It's got to be maybe '99, I think. Possible. It was a long time so, ago. Yeah. But it was, so, um, it was good fun. I, can't, I always remember when I turned up here and I couldn't quite believe how hot it was in, in Burgenland. Like think, thinking like, oh man, it's going to be like chilly and, and whatnot. And it was like 35, 40 degrees. It's just like baking. Yeah, I remember one year it was like over 30 for 30 days. I think it was crazy. So, yeah, you know, yeah. since then we, uh, we, I think we share a, a passion you know, for making people better and some more OCD like determination to find our way out of the tunnel of golf improvement. And it just find, happened. Find, that... find, find stuff that is potentially not possible to find. <laughs> yeah. And I think, uh, you know, at some point in the, in the, in the journey, you know, we took a, a fork in the road on some level, uh, you know, actually, if you take, um, you know, first principles, why do we do what we do is, uh, you know, we're still trying to get people to score better, right? And that's actually yeah. an interesting thing because I was talking to, uh, I think, Kevin Kirk with Noblo and said, uh, you know, not everyone wants to score better, right? They want to enjoy the game more. Uh, you know, they, they want to flush it more often. You know, so there's all sorts of mm. uh, components come into it, playing the game better. But I think there's not many people that would be unhappy if their score gets better. But uh, I, that's, I, think, I, think, I think that's a big thing, though, because I've, yeah. I've fallen foul to that in the past where you know, you, you're treating somebody like they want to just, you know, go out there and knock five shots off their round and, you're, and you, your behaviours are not matching what their expectations are. And all of a sudden, you lose them as a client, right? Because, That's right. You, you know, if you, they just wanted to kind of get on the golf course, strike it a little better, have some fun with their pals and whatnot. I'm not really in that space anymore. But, right. um, like, I have different, you know, different types of pressures now where, you know, players still want to play better and shoot lower scores on the golf course but like now like like okay we need to do this now right because they haven't got all the time in the world right well it's also possible to be putting uh things in different boxes on some level and say you know what i think a lot of the the times when you're you know uh, uh with pros i mean there's, there's always new short game shots to learn for example but you know new swings is not always the thing that they they need and so why don't you give us a uh, you know, small synopsis of what your journey has been from you know, maybe the last 10 or 20 years, you know, how, yeah. how you've taken the path that you have. And you know, I've yeah, been I mean, very it's impressed kind with of, what you're doing. It's kind of 
it, it's funny actually because I, I think I mentioned it to you that when when we connected again I, and I started learning more about what you and Mike are doing, it's almost like it backtracked for me, yeah. right? With when with when I had well, I was coaching players, I was like twenty five, coaching somebody on tour and trying to get them to fit a certain model. But when I think back to what their what their style was now, you know, they were more on top with their right hand. The club stayed outside way longer. And I was trying to get them to change this, okay? Yeah. And it was like, and when I look back at it, you know, I feel a little bit responsible. You know, luckily that that person is still friendly with me now and, you know, and whatnot. But it was very much, that was a huge point for me where when I was, I felt responsible, right? Because we care. Yeah. Um, That's a good attribute, by the way, for a coach. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and, and the big thing was, I just started to think, well, around that time, like there has to be more than this, right? Are you, and even if you're, even if you are working on somebody's like mechanics and whatnot, surely there are, there are good, be better ways of doing it and, and right. not so good ways of doing it. And, and then started to open up that box. And, right. um, and then I, I met, I went to a, uh, just a, a random seminar um, at the Belfry, getting my CPD points and, they it was uh somebody started talking about like ecological dynamics and like constraints led learn and i'm like going oh my god Whoa. like what is this stuff you know i've never been exposed to that and that just opened it up even further to go down the route of like okay well what are we doing here you know if we're if we want to help somebody get better and play better on the golf course so like, what are we doing you know it's like how are we doing it rather than just looking at it and saying, well, this is what to do, and that's important. Right. But then it's like, well, how do we do that? You know, how do we help this player with their, you know, we all have beliefs and, and values in the world as well that, that influence what we do. Right. Um, and, yeah, and then I started going off on all these tangents, like speaking to, like, Anders Ericsson and um, Robert Bjork at UCLA, Fran Pirazzolo. Um, Dave Allred, you know, a number of different people just trying to figure out um, and still doing it, you know, it's I'm, I'm learning stuff new every day, you know. Well, I think, <clears throat> you know, we're, we're almost like uh, if you take a, uh, you know, a golf teacher and say it's almost like you're the GP, you know, the general, general doctor and you have to refer out to different places and you go to those different places and those different people have, you know, significant depth of expertise and knowledge in that field that you didn't probably potentially even realize that there was right and that's what it seems like to me it seems like you know what you're doing is the future of um you know golf instruction in terms of adding a you know a branch to the tree as it were um but you know you're it's like the old t dire strait song showing my age you know telegraph road right so they go down you know they have to chop the way down and the second time is five people can go because it's uh yeah yeah been absolutely. chopped down a bit and there's a lot of people have been trying to chop, but no one's really been able to, you know, put the asphalt down and drive a car down it. And so it seems like for me, the reason I'm, you know, very keen to, uh, to have people see your work. I mean, a lot of people already have is, uh, it seems like you're laying a path that potentially could be followed by players and instructors, which for my opinion, up until this point with people talking, you know, loosely about motor learning, it's been, uh, there's not really been the, there's been the, the terminology, but not necessarily the application. And so, yeah, um, and I, and I think in some ways, you know, it's it is challenging because golf is, um, you know, it's it's riddled with with culture, good and bad, you know. Yeah. So, um, and and sometimes I, I think some of the stuff that 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 I do with regards to you know trying to improve somebody's performance through you know through practice and and so on and so forth. It's not that hard. It's not that easy to see, right? Right. Whereas if somebody is, you know, changing something with, you know, TrackMan or 3D or, or whatever, or working out in the gym or whatnot, it's very easy to yeah. see that. It's very linear, isn't it? That's right. Yeah. 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 And, and, and the, the concept of that is that it's from a player's perspective, you can kind of see this in a coach perspective. Well, if I can see that, it's much easier to buy into some ways. And it's a bit, but you can't really see what's going on in somebody's head, right? You can see yeah, some but, you know, behaviors also of what the, they're doing. You know, there's also the parachute. You know, it's almost like the Icarus effect, right? So, 
you, you can potentially, you know, speak someone through every single shot, as you know, and make them hit it better. But the fall when they get to the golf course is, is large too, right? So the transfer yeah. effect. And, um, you know, so that's why it's interesting, uh, you know, what you're saying, because you can feed the, the short term gain, but not feed the long term gain, you know, in, in some ways. And um, you know, it's almost like you're, you're a parent, you say, I wouldn't do that, you know, if you do that, then you're going to fall over and hit your face. But, <laughs> yeah. You know, you just, no, 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 you don't understand. This is exactly what I need to do. And, uh, <laughs> well, you're going to hit your face. No, 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 no. So, you know, so, so creating that kind of difficulty in the right manner is, uh, is, um, is a great skill. And I would just say that, um, you know, people don't potentially realize how, or maybe they do. I think there's a lack of laziness, you know, there's a, there's a curiosity and conscientiousness about the way you have to go about your business because you're not only not able to see your outcome, but you're not always able to see the, you know, the cause of the, the thing that's happening. Right. And so you have yeah. to really take all of the, the loosely related points of evidence. I mean, you've been great working with, um, you know, Mark Brody. So that's obviously external evidence. And then, you know, finding a way to communicate with the player in order that you can kind of glue together some disparate pieces of information and, and create a path that, you know, you as the, you know, kind of parent can say, I have a really good certainty that this this path is going to lead to what we want. Yeah. And, here's and, I, and I, you know, I love, you know, it's much, I'd much rather <clears throat> look at, um, you know, good data and, and stuff like that rather than buy into like people's beliefs and, and opinions you know this 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 anecdotal component to to what we're doing you know and i think there is enough of it so i would look at the data from a player and go okay well this is where we are these are the competencies you have right now but where do you want to go right so what so where what are the attributes you need in this data that to get you to i don't know play d1 golf or right. get you to play on the european tour or pga tour or whatever it might be and then we've got to train at that, right? We can't be tra we can't be training at the level of what we're of how we're sitting here right now. But then, we've I've done some stuff recently with um, with Dave Collins and his PCDEs, and um, to find out what okay, well, what's stopping that individual doing that, right. right? So when we're looking at these performance skills, these behaviors, you know, is that fear of failure? You know, we can we can get somebody to answer questionnaire now and go through this and it, and it works this kind of out for us to give us a guideline of saying, okay, well, this might be a reason why you're not able to do this when it matters. And if we can put the, the pieces all together, you know, then you have a really, really good, um, you have a really good outcome, but all that stuff takes a lot of time as well. Yes, you know, absolutely. To, to, to figure all this stuff out. Yeah, no, I, I you know, I, I probably more than anyone, uh, recognize how uh, hard you work at this and you know people see you appear on a on a podcast or whatever and they say oh yeah model learning you know transferring you know uh, what do you call it block or block or variable <laughs> practice all right see ya take it to the course you know but you're actually uh, there's a lot more to it right because it's like and, and you're uh, independently I just came up with the thought it's an iceberg which oh, by the way is your business <laughs> yeah. um, so iceberg golf is, is your brand and it, it represents everything right so um, so uh, Kevin Kirk is on here so hi Kevin uh, you know I keep hey, referencing Kevin. back to his um, chat uh, and what you're saying is the same that you have to kind of spend a lot of time up front identifying um, you know what the variables are in play yeah. I think, you know, I, I take from you there that you you and the player have to have a very clear uh, understanding what the dream is, right? What the goal is. And, yeah, and the, and and the other can... thing as well, like, it's easy for me to, you know, I'll look at all this information, right? And I'll say, okay, well, th this is, these are your, these are the player's goals, right? From a, right. from an autonomous standpoint, that's not for me to, to say, oh, this is what I want to do. Right. Then we, then you kind of work it out and say, okay, well, what's, how do we get there? right with the in the least evasive way possible right well i and think it, they it, uh they, they always have like an inherent i mean it's not obvious right it's in a built-in i'm going towards my target or i'm not sort of sense in the system right and so that you yeah. know up front getting that is 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 obviously very key and then finding ways to be on the same team driving towards that is 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 part of the upfront work that you know you and you and kevin kirk do especially well i would say
I, I also think one of the biggest things that um, I, I don't know whether this just comes with like maturity, and I'm sure you have this, and Kev will have this. You look way the, more mature than me, by the way. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> less sun. <laughs> um, is the ability to um, ask the player, right, yeah. and actually like collaborative work, and yeah. you say, "Look, you're the you're the guy out there having to." to pull the trigger over this, like what, what, what can we do? Right? right. I mean, what's, what's, what's holding that back. Okay. What, how does this task look? How does this feel to you when we do it on the golf course? Does this match the behavior of what's right. going on in a tournament? And I think sometimes um, too many coaches, I feel just try and give the answers. Right. And they're a little bit, whether it's insecure or whatnot, but just to lay it on the line and say, look, you know, you, you give me some ideas as well and then yeah. we can put it in a framework of of helping them you know and yeah, that's, that's, that's interesting because you know before when you're talking about um uh your system you know i was thinking you know, when people describe their swing to me you, you're obviously we have an idea of what we're going to do but you know we're also gluing together kind of their feels you know in, in a it's almost like you're you know trying a case as a judge right and you've got all these little data points you know you've got that piece of information i like that feel you know my swing feels like that and okay what's your bad shot is this and that where you hit it on the face you know and so you can kind of glue all these bits of information together to to find a elegant kind of simple you know change a minimum get the maximum kind of solution right and so that's yeah yeah so it seems you know we do obviously that from a you know a technical standpoint but um obviously we don't just do technical stuff we're in the business of learning and transferring as well as it's just the same as you don't just do learning and transferring so but the thing I like, and I will go when we do the um, the recording for your um, the the workshop and whatnot. You know, I'll go into this in a little bit more detail. But the thing I love about what you guys do is that I, I look at it from a periodized element, right? So I look at develop, training, and performing, right? right. So, and they all have different practice structures within right. a framework of the player's year. Okay, so but the good thing is, is when you're in the <clears> green <throat> box of like the develop area you know, you're trying to primarily stabilize a movement, right? So how, how are they moving to produce a certain outcome? And you're trying to stabilize that. Now, the thing which you guys do, you actually make that process quicker, right? right. Because, you're actually, because you're actually doing something based on their, their anatomy we also, and, how, and how they're built. So it's like- we know, we know when to stop, which is actually a really important part of that process. You know, we say, oh, we've achieved our goal with that. So now move on to something else, right? It's not like this never ending, you know, stuck in beginner mode, as it were. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. And every time somebody does something new with their, with their golf swing, unfortunately, they do go back to beginner mode. Right. You know, and it just depends on then, is it something new or is it something that is, um, that they might have done before, which is just reaffirming it or going over something then they can move away from beginner mode a little bit quicker. Mm -hmm. but every time somebody does something that is new or, or, or even adjusting something, we go back to beginner mode. And this is, the, this is the logic for me of like, well, this stuff a lot of the time needs to be done at the right time. That's right, that's right. Right, because if we don't do it at the right time and we're, we're in the business of helping somebody perform, so we have performance pressures, and we do it at the wrong time, if that's not agreed upon, that's quite invasive to that that's individual. Right. That's right. And they have to have a super, uh, an unbelievable mindset to be able to then just switch that off and go, well, think, and go play. You know, I think that's interesting when you work with uh, you know, players at the highest level is that they have a set of skills that are not defined necessarily, but they're there and in order, like for example, to filter through information, to do it at the right time, turn it off at the right time or apply at the right time, whatever that might be. And, uh, you know, so we, we take those things for granted, but, you know, as the player goes down the ladder of performance level, we start to have to, I think, you know, explicitly say, you know, this is a process you need to follow to do this. And then at that yeah. point do the, you know, stuff like that. So I think, I think when we, you know, when you, you, you can, on some level, when you're working with tour players that say you have to come up with good information because they can apply it, obviously. And if it's wrong, it's going to look wrong. Um, yeah. But at the same time, they sometimes uh, are really beneficial to their coach in that they can run the process of filtering the information out 
in a way that you know it's not really clear to the public or the coach even. Absolutely. Um, but you know those systems they have within the system because they grew up in this teaching system as well, right? For thirty years or yeah. whatever it was. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And I think again, it's you know that that is important, and it you know also comes down to you know if you're working with. Um, like an elite collegiate golfer, right? So let's say a youth golfer or a junior golfer, they, they, you know, you might say, okay, we're looking at performing later, right? So it's, it's right. a different type of process right. to, to what we're going to actually go through. It'd be like an Olympic athlete training for four years for the Olympics. That's a different process right. than, than somebody have, wanting to perform in a block of three weeks in a tournament and then have a week off and then they have to go again. You know, totally different scenarios. That's a really cool perspective because uh, at the end of the day, um, you've been outside of golf looking for this information, right? So you, yeah, you've probably been yeah. running into, you know, Olympic kind of theories and coaching and stuff like that. Yeah. So what are the biggest lessons that you've learned outside of golf that you could kind of bring back in? Um, I would say the, the set, I would say there's not, they try and limit the guessing or they try and limit the luck. Okay. Right. right. So they, everything is very planned out, right? I'm like, okay, what am I doing on this day to do to that day, to that day, to that day? You know, and there's that gra a great book, like, does it make the boat go faster? So there's that <laughs> question. That's a good but one. But there's that, there's that question yeah. of like, what, what elite athletes uh, I feel do, you know, I, and I talk outside of golf, is that every day they'll ask, okay, is this going to make the boat go faster? Am right. I getting better today? Is this going right. to get me one step closer to my, right. to my goal? And right. the other thing is, well, they definitely seem to control their, um, their intensity and their, in, their level of importance to what they're doing on the stuff that you can't see. You, right. see, them, you see them perform on the, on the TV or whatnot, but they still bring that level of, okay, I really want to get better, that attitude to get better, on a, on a Tuesday and a week off, you know, it's right. like, and, and those things I see with, um, with a lot of, a, a, you know, elite stuff. And I think that we can learn a lot from that in golf, right? I think that, um, I think our, our ability to, like I said, plan and do things at the right time. And it can be in sort of a micro element as well, Tal, like it, within a week, you know, rather yeah. than looking at it over a whole, a whole year, but well, just knowing not... what, knowing what to do and when to do it, you know, and being on the same page with that as well. So you give the player huge amounts of autonomy and you say to them, okay, this, let's say you go through the schedule and you go, okay, this is a, a blue day. This is a performance day. You get, and you, you want to get used to looking at the golf course and, and figuring that stuff out. Okay, great. Some people just do it. Right. But exactly. some people need yeah. to be coached how to do it. It's funny. I was just uh, having a chat with someone about um, Jordan Spieth and I'm like, it's almost like you know, we were talking about uh, like neural fatigue, you know, just being, ang you know, driving the boat too fast for too long a period of time. Uh, not to say that, I, you know, uh, he is. A, it's like I said, he almost is like a minor injury that doesn't downgrade his, uh, his golf in any way at all, but enough to have a rest. And, you know, and so, so then I thought, uh, you know, what happened with Burn, right? So he hurt his, uh, he's, he should be here, by the way. Hey, Burn, Servus. Uh, he, uh, you know, he hurt his hand, but I wonder how much that gave him, uh, you know, enough space from the game, you know, kind of backing up enough that you could potentially see the game from, you know, far enough away that you can start to, to do what we kind of are trying to do is to put it into blocks, manageable blocks. And then within each of those boxes have something to kind of pay attention to, uh, that is, you know, building a cathedral and not, a you know, a, a straw house. Yeah. I th one thing when we were like and he, he might this is just this is just my take on the whole situation when he got injured right and again this is another attribute of a of an elite performer um when when he was waiting to figure out like what it was is the risk going to heal itself he was like a lost dog like he i mean he <laughs> did he there was he didn't know what to do is a little bit of frustration and this is just my perspective on Right. on the situation right but the moment he then decided okay now i need to go and get the operation done and the operation was done all of a sudden there's the a plan. they could see the light 
yeah. right? And it was like, yeah. okay, this is what I'm working for and I'm going to diligently work towards that. And he was a completely different person. Oh, that's interesting. And it, and it, was, and it was amazing to, you know, and again, that's just my take on it, you know? Like, he might, he might see it completely different, but that's, um, yeah, so there needs to be that, whether it's that intrinsic or extrinsic kind of goal for them to be able to, okay, now I'm going to be, I'm going to really be process and diligent to work yeah. towards that. And just stick to yeah. it because it's easy to not. Well, it just seems like, uh, you know, sometimes when things are not going as well as they could, they, you know, the, the players and coaches and the whole, pe you know, the whole crew almost like screws themselves into the ground, you know, with the, with the you know, keep putting the foot down on the pedal, even though there's a corner coming up sort of thing. And um, yeah, you know, sometimes yeah. that, you know, just that distance of perspective. So, so, you know, for me, the distance for us as coaches is to say, you know, first principle, what are we trying to do? Well, you know, it depends on the goal of the person, right? They want to flush yeah. it, they want to score better. Okay, so, Absolutely. you know, what are the different boxes that contribute to that? And obviously, uh, you know, the golf swing or whatever, technique of any given shot is something. Um, you know, are you fit enough to do it? And can you withstand, you know, the repetitive nature of the game? You know, so there's yeah. obviously the, the fitness at both ends of the spectrum, you know, build a bigger engine, but also, you know, look after it that it's not going to fall apart. And then, so how many other boxes do, can you identify? We got probably how to spend time at the golf course. Uh, yeah, because you're not with them all when the you're time, on the golf right? course. Yeah. How you know what do they do in the time that they're at the golf course? You know, from a learning standpoint, you know, rather than just playing golf, you know, relatively, uh, you know, low intensity, you know, meaningless golf. You know, for some of the practice rounds, other than seeing the course, of course. That's why I guess some of the guys like to play matches. Yeah, I mean, even like, I mean, if it some of the stuff that I, that I would tend to use to give a little bit of a framework to, to a, you know, to a player, and this can be any player, whatever you, you know, can be working on, you know, okay, you got your technique. Well, I need to adapt that technique to hit this particular shot right. in this, in this scenario. Okay, great. Um, so you use a thing called win, move, lose, stay, right? So, and, okay. and the, the win component can be whatever. It can be, okay, hit that shot three times in a row with three different clubs, okay? Once you've done that, you need to move, right? right? And, you, and you need to do something right. else, right? And that, Beautiful. And, that could be, and that can be two components. So that, that can be, okay, I do another task or right. another type of shot, or I keep with that shot and I up the challenge point. Right. So now I'm gonna go onto the golf course give myself that scenario, can I do it on the golf course? Right. If you can't, okay, you have, a, you have a choice. You either move back a phase or you sometimes can use the golf course to battle it out and say, okay, can I practice it here? Yeah. But, but if they then lose and they, they're, they're struggling to actually do it, then give them the, the license to actually stay there and start to explore and figure it out. But the yeah. moment they then go, and this is why I think golfers fall short, the moment they go, okay, great, I've done the three in a row, or it could be just two, it could be whatever. Whatever right? it is, right. Whatever you set the target as, the moment they get that, they've got to move and do something else. Yeah. Golfers don't do that enough. That's right. They, over, they overstay their welcome at that particular component because well, uh, i've got to groove it yeah <laughs> well i think that last two minutes is some uh, some real instagram live gold there that should uh, be repeated for many people mm -hmm. i think actually you you know for me um just the the win lose uh move or stay win is, move lose uh, stay yeah yeah that uh, is, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that already uh you know I'm, I'm just looking for nuggets to help golf teachers you know bring uh, learning to life, right? And I think just that yeah. small piece there is, I mean, it's small, but it opens up a whole can of worms, but it's, uh, it's very practical. I think that's great. Great. Well, well there's also another thing. Analogy. That, yeah. And there's another thing that we could, that I would do on, um, and this can be done more on the range. Cause I know people sometimes have um, coaches and, and players and whatnot. If they have only, you know, a small amount of time, but they feel, okay, I've got something, but I need to add a little bit of needle to it. I need to add a little bit right. of pressure to it, right? And people ask me the question all the time, yeah, but you can't really simulate the same pressure. Well, Sean, uh, what's her name? Sean Bylock, right, who 
wrote a fantastic book called Choke. When she talked and all the research she's done under pressure, even the smallest bit of pressure or a little bit of stress in something is better than none. Right. Right. So right. it can be anything. So we do a thing called stand or deliver. And there's a guy in Germany called Mo Lambert. And I had him do this recently mm -hmm. where we gave him 10 minutes right in the in the bank. So then we're using track. Oh, nice. Yeah. And we're basically saying, OK, this is your corridor. So if you have one shot, if you hit that shot into your corridor, you lose a minute. Right. Right. But if you miss it, you have to stand with no phone or anything for 10 minutes <laughs> until you get another shot. That's funny. That's like because, the ultimate pain these days. <laughs> because, because the thing is then, what you're trying to do is add a little bit of meaning to what that one shot is. Right. And, and you know, for anybody, it might be, okay, three minutes, right? right. And, and your goal is to, to deduct or get rid of all those those three minutes and then you right. and then you win yeah, but it's but it's amazing the kind of the needle it's it puts the player under a little bit to say i don't want to stand here for, for 10 minutes right but that but then all of a sudden they've got to get themselves into that mindset of saying yeah. okay let's let, let's hit this shot and let's do it that's right that's brilliant really good stuff so what um what books do you recommend for people what's uh what have been the most influential five let's say so far other so than the one far. you're going to write, because this is uh, this is necessary for the world to. <laughs> I because, don't know. You know. I think. Go on. Yeah, I think from a. I do. I read some books now, and I read a, you know a lot of papers and stuff like that. Yeah. But I would go. It depends really on what level of, of player you're probably, um, working with. But I, I do like the Skill Act books from like Routledge stuff. Like you can. And, you know, the expertise as reference books to kind of have, right, for coaches to go. And it's just more about ideas, isn't it? Like, it's not like yeah. saying, okay, this is going to work for anybody. It's like, okay, what idea? I'm, I'm lacking for idea. Okay, let me just flick through this reference book and look at something in there, you know, and, and, a, and things yeah. like that. Well, as a, a book I read, I have, actually have it on my desk here. This is something I read recently. Um, the in pursuit of excellence from a guy called Terry Orlick. And that, that to me is, um, and again, it's not necessarily golf related, but it's, it's all sport related, but you can, you know, you can take some absolute like brilliant nuggets out of it, <clears throat> to be honest. Well, I think that's, uh, uh, again, it's, um, I think there's some fundamental skills. Again, my brain works by breaking things into boxes as a coach, you know, which is what we're doing with the, you know, the, the ultimate golf lesson is finding out how to help people coach better. Um, you know, some of the most brilliant minds out there don't necessarily have um, a huge depth of um, knowledge in certain things, but they have an ability to put patterns together, right? And that seems mm. that that's what you're, you're, you're explaining to me is that you've got inspiration here and there and everywhere. But because you give a shit and yeah, yeah. you care... And because you, you know, you want to do the best you can. And there's all these kind of character, character logical kind of things that glue it together. Then you think, and I have a funny story for myself, you know, I used to go and, you know, try and learn from everybody in my thirties. And now that I'm 40, uh, <laughs> I decided not to, to do too much, you know, and, and it's been a great period of time where instead of, you know, you, you're, it's almost like hitting balls on the range, right? You go and read a book and you just kind of yeah. sit in the back seat and you have it, you know, read it to yourself. So you're actually trying to solve problems and think using your brain, right? But I think you do need to go through the the reading and the and the studying early in order that you, you have the, the framework to, to think your way through the passage, as it were. Yeah, um, I, do, I do it in smaller blocks than that, right? Yeah. So I'll, I'll go through periods where you know, I'll read and I'll read and I'll read and I'll, I'll pick the phone up to somebody and whatnot. Right. And then I just have, I just have breathing space then. So after a period of time, like I write all the stuff down in my, in my note, notebooks and stuff and I just leave them. Right. And I just, yeah. and then I'll go through a period where I won't learn anything. I just have to somehow digest all this information, keep stuff, throw it out. If I don't, if I'm like, mm, if I read a paper right. and I go, yeah, I don't think the research or the, the experiment was, is good enough, right? Yeah. Well, what was the intent just, of the, 
the yeah. test in the first place, right? I mean, yeah. just asking the slightly wrong question, you know, kind of puts it out of context almost sometimes. Yeah, and and it's and I also look at like I'm very self. I think self-critical, right? So, I, you know, I will always want to read something to figure something out, or there's always a reason for me. Okay, going down these rabbit holes of like reading certain papers. Like I'll never just like have ten different topics of 10 different papers strewn all over the place they're usually you know Very condensed specific, into right. one type of uh, scenario and then right. i'll look at that and go because it's something i want to figure out or or i'll understand more of because you just never know do you like at some point like you you'll find you'll just draw upon something that you might have right. read 15 years ago and because it's and this is the same in golf because it's contextual Right. It works That's its right. way into long into long term memory. So you can then retain that and you can draw upon that at a different time. Well, I was talking to uh, uh, Kevin Kirk again about that. We were just chatting and uh, he said that that's kind of like the book uh, Blink, you know, where you yeah. you suddenly make this, uh, you know, incredible decision in a very short space of time. But obviously it's, it's a product of your life's experience in education. right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think there was um, that story in that where the guy looked at the sculptor, was it, or the picture or something, and he just knew that it was a fake like that straight oh, away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, and <laughs> Which, it, it was like, and people are looking at it and go, "How the hell did he know that?" But it's again, it's because of everything yeah. that's gone on in his past. And I think you, again, I going back to that element of like caring. I think if you don't care, stuff doesn't stay with you, right? You can read right. stuff, but that's you'll right. never retain it. That's right. And the, I, think, um, I think, I, think uh, I can't remember who it was. It was someone, one of these famous uh, British guys. Uh, he said the purpose of education is to teach people to think, right? And so I think, you know, what I'm trying to highlight for you and um, is there are, you know, a number of people around golf that have used the terminology of, you know, mode learning this and that. But you're sitting there and really, you know, give you credit. Uh, you care and you're really thinking about how to apply it on a daily basis until your point, you know, really building up your education to, you know, potentially give you the intuitive reactions that you need to, to act in the right way, according to the, you know, the best practices of learning and, and performing. Right. And the stuff that we'll go through, um, you know, in the ultimate golf lesson as well, it will be to do with, um, like a, a planning or periodizing framework, right? And I remember when I, when I originally came up with this idea or just mm -hmm. thought about it, it was like, okay, the, it was, it was kind of complex, right? For, and it was, it was for me really to know, <laughs> but then I'm like, but, but then I'm like, okay, as we started to go through it and I, I got, I got in contact with a guy called Fabian Otte, who's a goalkeeping coach at Burnley and he's just done his PhD on, on something similar to, to this, because he's a specialist coach like like golfers yeah. are. And I've put it into my own framework and I've been like bouncing ideas back and forth from him. But now it's getting to the point where it's it's more about the player, right? Knowing, okay, well, if we look, put this into, and we just say, okay, it's a blue day, it's a green day, it's a red day. They know, okay, what type of level they need to be at or what type of things they need to they should be doing to right. influence performance on that particular day but even just the just the colors terry just so people yeah. just go okay even even like a college coach could look at this and go okay we have our we have our tournament here right well, if we want to do well in that tournament what is our training going to backtrack from that how is right. it going to look on a day-to-day -day basis today's a, a red day why because we have a bit of time Right. We can we can we can fail a lot. We can try and stretch right. you. Yeah, this this uh, you know these principles lend themselves beautifully to, I mean, obviously high performance on any any level, but uh, that kind of environment beautifully, I would say. And the other thing as well, you can also then you know if coaches are out there and they only teach beginners or club golfers, like it's it's not mine right take it and adapt it to what your environment is and, and just, yeah exactly but, but but i think the only the only thing i would say is just think about it not don't just go oh that's really good i'm going to use that no take yeah. some time think well, about that, how it's going to work in your environment all right that's what that's my point is people don't really realize i think for you 
um, you know, banging out the one hour lessons is, is a thing. Um, but in your job, you're, you know, you, you, you're walking around on the golf course doing what you're doing. That doesn't, it doesn't stop there. Right. I mean, you go home and like we all do, I think, and, you know, really consider all the variables and think, you know, how could you done better? How could they have done better? What systems do you need to learn to make it better? And I think that's the, the traits that, you know, really elite level coaches have, but it's, again, it's one of those things that you can't necessarily see. So it doesn't get a lot of credit. But people are like, I, you know, people take the piss all the time, don't they? And it's just, that's just the nature of it. And, you know, when you're carrying a, a notebook around all the time and writing stuff down, well, if you have four notebooks, right, and you feel to go through the master and go, yeah, that was shit. That yeah, was yeah. really good. That that yeah, kind yeah. of worked. Okay, let's let's highlight that. You've always got references to come back to. And actually, what happens is you make, you can help the player streamline the process and go, right. Yeah. Okay. These are the things that are going to influence your outcome. These are the things, if you do these things, that's going to have the biggest influence on your score or, right. or what it is over a period of time. Right. Whereas if you, if I'm not taking these notes and I'm not going, that's great. That's not good. Reflecting on that. I'm, I basically have too much information and you need to just yeah. like chop it up, you know? And that's just right. Like, that's right. And that, that's kind of what it is. Well, you think of, um, I mean, at the top level of golf, obviously it's a, you know, a very lucrative game. I mean, it's a multi-million dollar business. And if you compare that to other multi-million dollar businesses, you know, there's a whole series of managers that communicate with each other and have set objectives. And so there's all sorts of things going on. You look at, uh, you know, football teams or, you know, in America, you know, the size of the teams around the team, you know, yeah. around the, the different teams they have, um, you know, it, it kind of needs to be that way. There's, there's been a, uh, and it, obviously each team is a different dynamic and this and that, but, um, you know, leaving it to the chance that that person has the inbuilt skills specific to take them to the next level is, is leaving it to chance just a little bit. And some, you know, some players are going to be, fantastic at, at you know at, at managing themselves and doing the things that you know that they know they can some players are not you know they they want somebody to help them organize and 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 you know put things into into context and and related to what they're trying to do on a day-to-day -day basis it just depends on what that individual feels like they need as a you know as a person and that's, that's right. you know, that's the trick. That's the tricky bit, isn't it? You know, well, yeah, it's the tricky right. bit, but it's the fun bit at the same time. So, um, how do you envisage? Um, I don't want to call it golf performance coaching. Uh, for you guys out there, Stu has tons of really good uh, podcasts out there as well. He did one with, I think, with me and my golf. It was really good. And um, within that, you you push back on being called a golf performance coach. I mean, it's like, you know, I, what, yeah, what is I, I this field? Really <laughs> I don't know what, I don't know what that is. <laughs> yeah. No, I know, but what's this field? I mean, there's it's like uh, you know, there's human human elements. There's uh, you know, obviously kind of learning elements. There's uh, I think there, there's a huge relating it to the actual outcome elements, obviously. Um, so you know, I'm just my, the way my brain is you know running around is just trying to find you know understandable boxes that I can put everything in. But the reality is so you're actually, a, a, you're, you're gluing these boxes together on some level. It's interesting because I, I would say I work in the, in the high performance space, right? That's, that's where I spend most of my time. And so performance coach or, you know, and it, a performance coach, you're looking at, okay, well, what, what can we do or what can we throw away that's going to help you perform right now, right? Or, or at your best. So what, how can I get those, how can I help you get more of those higher performances out right. of yourself without always trying to change something, you know, with you yeah. have what you have, how can we use that in, in slightly better ways? Because so you're like if a, you're on a best practice coach. Yeah. But if you like, for example, like if you're on a golf course with, with somebody, you right, a, a, a good player and you put them in a situation and they have, like the, the constraints guys or ecological guys will go, there's affordances, right? So there, 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 are, there, there are options for that player, let's say from 165 to a tucked right flag, mm -hmm. right? Well, they might have three or four different options from there. 
but every right. one of those options has a value to it. So it depends at that time of where they are, right. what's the shot that they're going to play. You know, it's like a footballer, like a midfielder, they get the ball, they have three, pretty much three passes that they could right. make. Right. They can make a simple one to the side, like Jordan Henderson. They can, they <laughs> can, <laughs> they, they can Pass play. it backwards like Jacka. <laughs> But Hold on to play... it for a few seconds first, though. Let yeah, the defense yeah. organize themselves. <laughs> play a slightly more risky pass, or they could turn and ping one, like, and, and a really yeah. high risk. But, but they're, they're affordances, right? And each one would have a, have a value to it. And in golf, because it's a slower-paced game, you can work that stuff out, and you can help right. the player kind of understand, well, this is the value to, you know, to that shot, to play at different levels and, and whatnot. But in other sports, like if I, if I was to look at multiple different strains of what you're doing, you'd actually be, be called a performance director because right. what you do, you're, sit, you're sitting there and you're, you're taking a lot of information in and right. figuring out, okay, well, what's the best for this, for this player? And, I, and right. I do think, like, and I'm not saying this is me because I think I have certain gaps in this, Right. But I think as teams get bigger, and I'm not saying get teams get bigger are always a great idea, but, I, but golfers have bigger teams yeah. nowadays. Yeah, that's right. They, everybody needs to have a value and you need to know what, what it is you're bringing to the table. But it, it can be a lot of information as well, Tal, go, like going into a player. That's right. Where, whereas if you had a performance director sitting by the side of a player, right. can filter all this information right. and figure yeah, out, okay, yeah, this... Do, do you know what I mean? Because it is, well, it is getting that way, you know. Well, it's like uh, it's like you're saying, you know, the, the 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 midfielder has the chance to to do the different passes. Um, you know, that depends on the context of the situation, right? So if it's the Absolutely. last minute of the game and Arsenal are one down to Southampton and they just went out the FA Cup, <laughs> <laughs> then uh, you know they should have been pinging them in a little bit earlier there. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. And so you know that's. Um, you know, I think there's so many variables to even just the, the situation with the player, right? It's the context, you know, is it, uh, do they need it quickly? Do they, you know, so there's, there's context, there's time, there's, you know, um, relationship to their long-term goals. I mean, there's just so many things which actually is almost like, you know, you're setting the GPS. That's the Absolutely. direction we're going in. These are the things which contribute to it. And, you know, here's how we dose that over, you know, X amount of time to get that goal. So there's just a really, um, uh, the professional approach that you know you've, you've created for yourself, which is really impressive uh, to listen to, and I think you know golf coaching in the future needs this um, you know approach even on every level, you know, micro macro. Uh, yeah. You know, even the lesson, hey, Mrs. You know Habermeyer, what uh, what do you want today, right? Like, why don't you know? So people need to bring these conversations in, even in the one hour lesson. Um, Absolutely. But especially at the highest level. I mean, you just think about how many players did not reach their potential um, because, you know, there's a launch model that came out and suddenly they're, that's all they're doing, right? Or Yeah, absolutely, know, yeah. Uh, Bryson comes out and he's, he, you know, he has a, a V12 engine under the hood and he's maxing it out. Uh, so now everyone's just going to the range you know, trying to hit the shit out of it, but potentially losing, you know, what it is that makes them to be a great golfer, right? Or, yeah, yeah. Her, or whatever it is. So, so there's these, you know, it's almost like the atmosphere around the earth. There's all these, you know, asteroids kind of pinging in and bouncing off the, the performance director. <laughs> yeah, but Hopefully. is that... You know, no wonder you look I, stressed. I, but, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I, think, but I think with those things as well, that, you know, what you're saying is, you know, we have to look at, you know, components of, Okay, where's the play? Like you said, where's the player in their career? What you know? What do they want to do with their career? How old are they? What you know? For me, there's you know, and again, this is why you know I like what you, what you guys do is because it's so it's about the the person, right? right? And you can you can measure them, and a lot and huge amounts of it is related to how they set up and and so on and so yeah. forth, which is That's right. which is really really good as well right. from an evasive standpoint to an individual. But but the thing is, if somebody is you know forty years of age and they come and turn around and go, oh yeah, you know they've won three times on tour, and they go, oh, I want to change my golf swing, and you're like, mm, I'm not really sure you have the time 
to really go down that that route. It's hard enough at 20, right? Ne never mind, you know, at 40. If there's a slight adjustment, then that's okay. But it, but it's it's how much are you willing to put into it from a time perspective, and right. how much is it going to give you at the other end? Like how much is that going to reduce your score by by doing that? Well, I think that's uh, another component that. Uh, uh, you know, it's not really talked about in golf is, is just communication. And, you know, what they're really saying potentially under the hood is, you know, I want to change my golf swing. So, well, why, do, why would you want to do that? Well, you know, I tried to uh, hit a cut on the fourth hole and, and I hooked it and, you know, made double and made no money. But the reality is, well, uh, well maybe we should practice the fade or, you know. So the, the problem is in the world of golf, uh, kind of until now, the next 10 years, I think, has, has got an unbelievable future of, of um, you know, different people doing different jobs. Um, but if all you have is a hammer, then the whole world is nails. So yeah, if somebody comes off yeah. the golf course and they're like, I didn't play very well, then it's like, let's change your swing. You know, that's all there is, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, hold yeah, on, yeah. let me just think about it for a minute. <laughs> Something doesn't look right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. So then, uh, you know, so rather than use communication, is like, oh, what is it about your swing that is not working? Well, you know, uh, I'm, I'm hooking it, whatever. Oh, what hole did you hook it on? Oh, I hooked it on that hole. So did, were you decisive? You know, did you did you make a plan of how to hit that shot? Yes. Are you good at that shot? No. So why did you <laughs> choose to hit it? You know, whatever yeah. it is, right? And so just kind of barrowing down in order, like to your point, uh, the way we like to teach is is change the minimum, get the maximum, which usually requires yeah. us to, um, you know, do a lot of uh, setup and and what have you. But um, setup includes planning the shot, right? And having yeah, the sure. in, intent in your yeah. head. Um, so the first question I ask when people hit a bad shot is, did you pay attention? You know, because these players that we we work with, I mean, they're able to hit a lot of really really good shots in a row potentially, yeah. um, and then suddenly out of the blue they just hit this bad shot. It, the, you know the 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 wheel didn't fall off the car right you don't have sure. to go and buy a new car or whatever it is so i think that's the i think that's the future of golf coaching which we're trying to lean on with this next um ultimate golf lesson we'll still have the other the thing which you say is, that, is that's where that again that collaborative element comes in let's say an, an, you know an elite player and you have that situation and you, you ask them the question okay i want to hit this particular shot okay great you know, these are the things you've done with this setup and so on and so forth to help them hit that particular shot. But then ask them, where would this be used, right? What what right. type of, give me an idea of a golf course or a number of golf courses where you would see this option. And all of yeah. a sudden, if that, even if they're on the range, right, that fit, that will fit, fit into short-term to long-term memory. Yeah. So when they get in those scenarios again, there's a higher chance that they're going to be able to transfer it, that and retain that. Yeah, it just appears, right? But then we used to, yeah. NLP used to call that bridging, right? So, so it'd be exactly what you said. So we'd, you know, we'd be uh, doing some kind of a change and then say, okay, now imagine yourself in the context where you're, you know, potentially you're least likely to, to be successful, you know, and, and imagine yeah. that going through. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's, a, that's really good information. Yeah, and that's again stuff that people can do, you know, just on the driving range is when they're when they're hitting a golf shot, try and give it some context to a right. particular sh to a particular environment that they that they want to be in or they might use this particular thing. And yeah, I think when we're doing a, that, yeah, when we're doing some of the research that we've done, um, some people say, well, surely you have to test that on bad players, um, kinda, you know. But if sometimes you make a swing change on a bad player. They don't have a intent. They're not, you know, heavily invested in the outcome, and so they don't, you know, quote unquote, compensate in the right way, right, to make the change uh, relevant. Because you know, yeah. I don't know. Let's say you close someone's club face thirty degrees, and you say hit the golf ball, and it goes to the left. That's pretty much like really bad golf for golf, right? They don't have an outcome. Whereas if you say to Burnt, you know, put your club face like this, and you know, go ahead and hit it. His whole life is you know, his whole neurology is driven by making that ball finish somewhere, which is really practical and useful. Right. And yeah, so that, yeah. um, you know, that, that part of golf is, is not really reinforced that much. And I think, you know, um, a lot of great coaches, uh, you know, really making players potentially pay attention 
So, I mean, you, you know, the old, uh, uh, you know, driving range scenario, end of the day on a Thursday in a, at a tournament and, you know, nothing's working. All right, let's just hit us a few fades and draws here, you know. So they so it almost, you know, get someone to, to revert back into, you know, more of outcome mode and, and yeah, that, yeah, intent, that intent almost, you know, flushes the system out just a little bit. Absolutely. And, you know, there's those kind of things that have happened to coaches over time, but what it seems like you're doing is is you're creating a systematic map around all of those pieces and giving yourself the opportunity to uh, consciously move around in the map as opposed to just kind of leap from, uh, you know, lily pad to lily pad, as it were. I, I, I always feel as well, and, I, and again, I've, I've thought about this a lot from a, you know, even a club golfer or, a, you know, somebody who's relatively new to the game. Um, I, I actually think that one of the very first lessons that that player should have, even if they are a beginner, is just to go out on a, go on a golf hole, right? Mm. And, you know, some of the, some of the researchers and scientists would turn around and go, but oh, the, it's going to be too difficult and, and so on. So, but I'm like, but if you frame it correctly, right. And to say, look, we're just going to go out here. It doesn't matter. Just have a crack at it. Just, just give them some context. And then when they get to the driving range and they practice, they have an idea of what it is and why they're doing what they're doing. Because right. the, bo the, the body and the brain if they don't know why they're doing that and what that's context, right. they ain't going to throw it out. The brain that's will really not huge. learn that. Yeah. There's a lot it of data not... in life, right, coming in, and it uh, it automates the really important things. Hey, can you imagine yeah. if uh, uh, the old Platts ride from Prufongs? <laughs> it just reminded me. <laughs> so in, uh, so in the, a lot of the German-speaking lands, uh, they have a, you have to get a license to play golf, right? And so it was a, it was a good business back in the day for the academies to bring these really people was, in yeah. for, a, for a week and learn how to get the license. So you talk about just the context, right? It's like, hey, come and learn to play golf for a week. Ah, it's all right. I could do that next year. Come and play golf and get a license, right? So you got the context, <laughs> you got the urgency. And, you know, so then, you know, we, we had to have them hit it, whatever, 100 yards and, you know, chip it on the green or something, whatever it was. And, and go on the golf course on the last day. Imagine, you know, it's kind of the business of golf it makes learning difficult, right? Because if you could just go on the golf course for like for the whole week, they, they solve the puzzle themselves because they've determined to hit it on the yeah. green, not in the reeds. Right. And, yeah. um, so that's, uh, and I know some you know, facilities just don't have the possibility to do that. Do no, I mean, it's hard, no. it's hard, it's hard that's to right. get on like some of that's the right. clubs and that's the golf course. And that's just the business of it, isn't it? You know, it's, yeah, it is, you know, but even if you say, you know, hit for 30 minutes is kind of some of the things I want you to do in order, you know, go to the first tee that you can hit it on this green next week. He's like, oh, I've got to do that. So then you take them yeah, back and yeah. say, let's do another, you know, whatever it is. So I think that's- And, that, uh, and that's great. Yeah, and I, I love that, you know? Yeah. That makes a lot of yeah. sense from a learning perspective to do that. Yeah. So- But again, some pl some coaches don't have that possibility yeah. and that's, no, that's, that's just the way that's it is. No, that's the reality of the situation. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. And Pats was, absolutely. Uh, was a good spot for it there. Especially the nine <laughs> holer there, it's just you know it's right there. Yeah, yeah that's fun. That's a good spot. Yeah. So uh, we've done an hour. Um, so my question to you or to everybody is at the end is always, uh, what is the ultimate golf lesson? And uh, you got wait, another hour probably to answer. It. <laughs> <laughs> what is what 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 is an ultimate golf lesson? Wow, well, what a what a question. How long's the golf lesson? Doesn't matter. You can make it up. <laughs> I can make it I up. I mean, if you think about, okay, so my brain's going to the box again. What is a golf lesson? What is an ultimate golf lesson? Golf lesson is some form of improvement, right? And then, you know, ultimate would mean it worked really well. So there has to be some kind of outcome. So, you know, some form the, of improvement, ultimate, some the, kind the, of outcome. The, the, the ultimate for me, where I, where I like to be with, with players, because I feel that everybody learns more is out on the golf course doing some form of challenge or whatnot in conjunction with either, okay, where they are to improve now or something, a behavioral element or a shot or whatnot, you know, for the future. Because I think when you're out there um, on the golf course, there's all different scenarios that can come in and you can actually learn a hell of a lot more about the player yeah. and, um, what they're doing in that environment 
and then the next day watch them play in a tournament. That that would be like see them action, see them in a practice environment on the golf course, yeah. and then watch them in in a golf tournament. Because I do think by watching players in golf tournaments, you cut through a lot of the other the stuff that um, that you can just throw out. You know, you don't need to do that yeah. because you see see. Ev- see everything in front of you. But again, some people so, will not have that option, you know. But that's that's my my ultimate because I think you can improve yeah, somebody massively, you know, by especially at an elite level on the on the golf course. That's oh, what we're trying true. to do, right? Shoot, shoot that's exactly what we're trying to do. The course. Some people are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some so, people in my where in the space where I am, that's all I care about. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, so uh, so we're excited to have you on the Ultimate Golf Lesson uh, Winter Workshop. Uh, what what can we expect you to to bring? Because today was uh, incredible. There's some great uh, nuggets that people can go right away and use. Um, what, what are you going to bring us in the in the workshop? I think what they'll hopefully what the coaches will get a you know get out of it is that not all sessions should be the same, right? So whatever practice session or training, they they're going to be different for different things and giving them a kind of a framework to know okay where where am i right so so that that sort of like compass element of like where yes, am i in, re- in in re- in relation to the tournament environment or or and so when they come and plan the day there's a real purpose to say right this is what we're doing right. today and this is why right and, and hopefully it'll be some stuff that you know that I've looked at, I've thought about for a long time that some right. people will not have been exposed to. And that's really well, I what, think, uh, what the idea is. I think when you, when you look at golf, I mean, usually there's not a ton of, you know, it's, let's not call it new stuff, but there is a better package uh, or hmm. a better compass to your point. I think that was an unbelievable word because I was thinking about some other stuff as you were saying it. And for me, what you've created in my head is, is movement, right? So you're in a lesson moving around in time yeah. and space intellectually and you're 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 in within a context so you're saying you know what's the purpose of this lesson well we have to find something which makes the boat go faster you know their score to go down Absolutely. so and it needs to know, be now like or right, it so, needs to be in the future so you know a, a club pro could be saying you know you've got to stop skanking it over the green seven times you know so let's just hit it in the middle of the green with your short game shot and, and that yeah. will help your score. So I think, uh, you know, the nature of golf has been to, um, uh, you know, to be very technical, but I think it has to be driven from the outcome first, based on what you're saying, go back to the start and say, what are you willing to do? What do you want? You know, create the path to the outcome together. Right. And then within that space, your, you know, score or, or whatever their outcome is, is, is the, is the objective and and you're using your skills as a coach, as a compass um, to move around that space. So I think the, um, the thing I've learned today is, is, is uh, there's a a word normalization, right? So it's, it's giving something a name, but which stops it moving. So a golf lesson has been turned into a stone, right? So we go to a golf lesson, we fix a swing and, and then we're done. Right. But the reality is it's like a weather pattern. Right. So you're moving yeah. around, it's changing and, and your skills as a coach help you to adapt and uh, just like golf, really. But it's, it's a, you know, move around to, in order to, to create this, you know, very uh, clearly a set objective, which is, is obviously to improve the score. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And that's going to be fun. I'm really excited to uh, sit down with you and listen to your presentation. And uh, I hope, you know, you're giving golf coaching a, uh, avenue to to explore and to um to get better i hope uh you know you can come up with some really good uh products for for that we'll see <laughs> you're too busy helping <laughs> you're too busy helping uh, just a few people come on <laughs> yeah i i have you know i've thought about it and it's just i'm one of the i just need to get it right you know and that's the and, but actually, I don't need to, right? Because if I keep trying to always get it right, sometimes I'll never get it done. And that's that's the the, the kind of the Power. tug of war that I have with myself, you know. Yeah. Uh, that's like so, uh, you're, you're on the driving range trying to hit 27 perfect drivers in a row. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
So, yeah. All right, buddy, that was uh, incredible. Thanks so much for your time. I know you're very busy. Pleasure. And uh, get well, keep getting better. Yeah, thank you. Um, thank you. I'll talk to you I'm very on, soon. I'm on the road. It's just going to hit me a little. It'll be, it'll be a few more days, I reckon, and I'll be uh, 100%. Yeah, you need a bit more laughing and it'll clear it out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good for the soul. Thanks, right. mate. Great pleasure. Cheers. Bye.